actually we're going to go visit my family up in Belleville right after this. Okay. Um, let's have another look at North American markets. Uh, the TSX holding on in early trading, but... Yeah, up a fraction of 1%, but our market has lagged U.S. equities so far this year. Excuse me. Our guest says there are risks ahead for Canadian stocks. We're joined by Philip Colmar, partner and global strategist at MRB Partners. It's great to see you. So you're a, a top-down advisory firm. People, big uh, accounts around the world pay you for research. Yes, yeah, pure independent research. Yes, exactly. So we advise uh, some of your biggest pensions, hedge funds, at multi-asset uh, managers, set the investment strategy for their global asset allocation or absolute return strategies. And we hear that asset allocation is is perhaps the majority of investment returns. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's the big tilt. So we advise the CIO's offices on, on how to tilt their portfolios into which countries, which regional markets, or, or which sectors. So, um, What's your view on Canadian markets? I know it's hard to generalize, but you're cautious? Yeah, we're more cautious. We, we've been constructive on, on the global economy, uh, the U.S. economy. I think it comes to a double-edged sword, though, with, with Canada. So I think people misplace the recession bets on the U.S. and global economy before earlier this year. We're unwinding that. So that's good in terms of growth conditions globally. It would be decent. The problem with it is, is it's also pushing up the 10-year Treasury yield. We're seeing bond yields rise um, significantly. And so it's, it's, we've broken out to new highs uh, in terms of bond yields. So while that's been constructive on equities more generally, Canada's participated in it. Canada sits in a uh, sort of a double-edged sword on that. It's good for growth that the world economy is stronger. We're not heading into an imminent recession. We leaned against those risks. Mm -hmm. The bad side of it is that Canada is sitting on probably one of the largest housing bubbles of all times. Um, and uh, I've analyzed housing bubbles in the developed world, and Canada is, is really got one of a unique one to its own. So it's got housing, house prices to income ratios that are off the charts. It's got affordability that's very weak. And so it already saw weakness in the housing last year when we saw interest rates and mortgage rates go up. We saw some stability in that as we saw mortgage rates kind of calm down, um, go kind of go sideways, and then growth conditions firm up a bit. And so we are seeing some stability in the numbers right now. The problem is, is bond deals are back on the rise. Um, they're being led by the U.S. and, and the Fed um, and U.S. Treasuries. But it's dragging up uh, Canadian yields, means mortgage rates are going higher, and we're running, we will run into a risk zone. So we view Canada as a weak link to the global economy on the interest rate story. And it, there's some backlash to the Canadian markets, and particularly the currency as well. I want to hear more about your views on housing, but why are bond yields going up? Are people worried about inflation? No, I mean, yes. I mean, in 2022, it was an inflation and the Fed catching up, really. And so it led it up. And it was really every central bank, Canada as well. Um, and so now we're starting to see a cresting in terms of inflation expectations coming down. We're seeing the Fed sort of go to the sideline. We're seeing other central banks looking to kind of take its exit as inflation kind of comes down or, or pause. The problem is, is that people had believed that we had broken the global economy with interest rates in 2022 going up. That was a mistaken bet. We didn't break it. The U.S. and Euro area in particular delevered. Unlike Canada. They delivered substantially over the past 15 years. They're a lot less interest rate sensitive economies. And so they've reaffirmed. And so the breaking point of interest rates is much higher than people think. And so what's happened is, is that as we've unwound the recession fears, we've pushed up bond yields. So bond yields are reflecting not necessarily inflation, although somewhat um, more sticky and longer term inflation. I don't think inflation's coming down to the 2% target anytime soon. Mm -hmm. um, but we are getting erosion inflation. What it's reflecting is, is that the, we didn't hit that breaking point of the world economy and bond yields or the long end of the curve, particularly prematurely inverted. And so we're unwinding some of that. So the, the flight to safety to bonds is to some extent dissipating. Exactly. Yeah, it's unwinding. Exactly. And I think as well, there was real bets that we would have see, particularly Fed rate cuts, um, but central bank rate cuts into, uh, was a, at one point the back half of this year, then it got pushed out in the early part of next year, then the back half of next year. But we're sort of unwinding that. If the cost of capital isn't damaging the world economy at this point, then it needs to go higher. We're not, there isn't really a case. The Fed may go or other central banks may go on hold as inflation kind of comes down. But rate cuts is a stretch when you, when you think of uh, the world economy not breaking under current rate conditions. Now, I know that you're not going to give a personal advice to anyone. You would never do that, but um, uh, certainly not live on air. But <laughs> if somebody has a house in an inflated uh, city in Canada, 
you would suggest they think about selling us anyway. Yeah, I mean, the problem with, with Canadian housing is it really got ramped up over, really it's been two decades in the making, right? We had, we had low inflation driven in the 2000s, for example, because of the commodity boom, drove up currencies and pushed down import prices. So it allowed the Bank of Canada to be more accommodative than it should have been. Then in the, the 2010s, after the housing bear markets in the US and Euro area, we had the global price setters dampening inflation. We had Bank of Canada playing competitive currency devaluation. So we ended up with, again, two easy accommodations, pushed up home prices. And the pandemic hits, and there's a case for it to burst. Um, but we hit it again with monetary and fiscal policy, and so we inflated it again. So you've had two decades in the making. You've got home prices that are very stretched. The worst part for a housing uh, bubble is when you have a credit bubble underneath it. And, and the amount of Canadian leverage into the system versus incomes is, is pretty astronomical. And we've seen debt servicing going up dramatically. We've seen it's very hard. A lot of homeowners, they don't, they don't benefit from 30-year fix like the United States does. Yeah. Um, so there was a lot of floating that got reset. There's a lot of other uh, uh, that are within rolling over within five years. And we've been in a couple of years of this higher interest rate environment. So we have some risks in the situation. We see the Canadian banks really not wanting to allow it to topple. They've been trying to extend these things. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, you know, in many ways, um, at some point it will. We've got wild e coyotes sitting over a cliff, and the bank's <laughs> trying to hold the plank out to hold it up. But uh, not to not to be too scary. But uh, but there is a risk, definitely a risk here, that if mortgage rates go higher or unemployment were to rise when we hit the next recession, mm -hmm. then this thing does end up in a deleveraging cycle. 